Okay. I'm going to call the finance committee meeting to order at 5.03 PM for February 5th, 2024. Um, the first item on the agenda is review of minutes, Jim. Um, I move that the minutes as amended uh, be uh, accepted from the um, uh, January 29th meeting. All right. We have a second. A second. All right. Discussion. Yeah. John, you um, want a comment? Are we okay as a group of paying the minutes by email or reviewing them by email? I was mm -hmm. concerned about the open meeting law. So you can send materials out for review, but you're right. We shouldn't discuss them by email. So like Jim can send them to all of us. Um, but if you're going to respond, respond just to Jim. If you have like a like a change or an update, don't respond to all. So, if, okay. So if someone spots an error, they can contact me individually, or would it be they would have would they have to I would, up at the meeting? Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, well, I I would actually suggest just taking care of it at the next meeting when you're approving the minutes. Yeah. If, unless it's something really substantial. I, I think it also can get chaotic. Hmm. Somebody tells Jim that you, they want to change, and I don't know about it. And then later I make another change. Well, it is it's, hard when you point. get the minutes. Like when you send out the revised minutes, sometimes I'm like, hmm, I don't know what change you're doing. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. I just go use, small. I just use, made like, some minor yeah. tweaks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. I have, <laughs> and I had a, I don't know, I have another change. Go ahead. Um, uh, what page? I don't know if it's a page. And I don't think it changed the teams. The next, the, the last page, the top paragraph about Veterans Memorial Day. Uh, motion passed 600. I believe it was 501. It was. It Mark, was. Mark of Stan. Yep. It's definitely yeah. my mistake. Then. Yeah. Yep. Ah, Sorry about good that. Good catch. Not that it matters a whole lot. But... Yeah, may as well have it right. <laughs> Amend and submit next time. No, I think we can just approve it as incorporating that change. Or... Yeah. Any other discussion? So it's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes with one amendment that 501 for the. Veterans Day. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Oh, wait. Um, uh, against? Abstaining. Well, I guess I'd abstain. I wasn't a member. Okay. <laughs> one, two, ah, three, four. Okay. So that's five, zero, one. <clears throat> All right. Um, very quickly, I have a couple comments. Last week we met, we talked about the um, a, a comparison across towns, across the whole state and in various categories about for single family, um, average single family tax bill and overall tax bill. I wanted to, a couple things that occurred to me since then. One is that those are 2023 numbers. So they're a year old. It's not this fiscal year, it's last fiscal year. So it's not really up to date. Second, is that even if it were this year, it does not include um, what we've already voted tax included um, for the library, right? So that's that's a, a an increase to our taxes that we've already voted that hasn't come into place yet. And the third comment, this is gonna be very nitpicky, but I wanna be accurate. So I made the comment last time that I thought it was median average single family, it's not median. What it is, is truly average. So what they do is take the total assessed value of single family homes, multiply that by the tax rate and divide that by the number of single family homes. So it is the average um, single family home. Simple average. Simple average. Yeah. That's the mean. Okay. That's the mean. Yep. Um, just to be clear, I'm sure nobody cares, but <laughs> whatever. So anyways, um, to move on, why don't we go straight into the treasurer budgets? 
um, to make sure that we can get through all of those tonight so that we don't do anything that makes you have to come back. Uh, Sounds great. And then if we have time at the end, oh, the other comment is that tonight is the um, planning board meeting at 6.30 in this room. So we have to wrap up. We have to be done by 6.20, 6.15, 6.20, something like that. So with that, let's move into treasurer budgets. Okay. So let's start with the treasurer collector salaries. And that's one of those that I just handed out to you uh, as an adjusted updated one. It's 145-5110. Okay. Um, this is this is just pretty standard uh, step increase. Um, I know at one point in time we had um, a bonus budgeted in here for the assistant treasurer if she was certified, and Sarah pointed out that that our new assistant treasurer wouldn't even be close to that, so we took it out of the FY25 budget. And then um, the only other adjustment was one that I got at 4.30 this afternoon. Um, the South Deerfield Water District has agreed to increase their stipend oh, for for the those positions. And so um, that was plugged into this. So I think this is a pretty good budget. Um, South Deerfield Fire will remain the same. And I've been told that Deerfield Area Fire Protection will remain the same as well for fiscal 25. Question? Yes. The stipend, should aren't we billing them for yes. your work? Yep, we are. But it's in here as a... So, so do, there, oh, do you have it in revenue also? It's in revenue. It's okay. it's in our miscellaneous revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a motion? Oh, I should have waited for that. Sorry. I move to recommend the... Um, Sum of one hundred sixty-three thousand and three for treasurer and collector salaries. Account number one four five five one one zero. We have a second. Second. A second. So this is two full-time positions, and it's just pretty much a following the class comp plan um, increase. There's no increase in hours. There's no increase in personnel. It's just straight. Okay, great. Um, any discussion, anybody? Go ahead. Uh, the, the, um, you, I just want to clarify. You said two full time positions, correct? Yes. There are no. There are no uh, partial FTEs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So there was a little bit of overtime last year, and there's no overtime this year. Yeah, I, you know, I had plugged it in last year, thinking that you know we were overtaxed and overworked, and maybe we need some overtime. But Sarah has reassessed that and said that with the two full time people, there's no need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. Okay. The very next budget is the treasurer collector expense, and it's 145 5410. We have a motion. I, I recommend um, Budget one four five fifty four ten for the amount of thirty nine thousand seven hundred seventy five. We have a second. We'll second that for the section. Discussion. Sure. Uh, yes. Oh, hang on. Let's let um, Sarah explain a little bit. And oh, then I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so not too many changes here to the line items to come up to the general budget. Um, mainly the increase is for postage. Postage has obviously gone up um, and all the bills, checks, everything goes out of our office. So um, the main reason for the increase on the general line is for postage reasons. Um, the tax taking, I did bump up a little bit. Um, our tax title attorney has been working very hard um, to create payment plans um, for stale tax title accounts. And we actually currently have four at the moment. Um, I would say this time last year, I'm not even sure we had any. 
Um, and it's currently bringing in just over 3000 a month um, in payment plans. So for taxes that we were receiving none on, we're now getting about 3000 a month um, towards those. So um, she has been working very hard. Um, so her my bills from her are a lot higher, but also those do get divided out and applied to the tax title accounts. So when the tax title uh, accounts, um, we receive payments for them, it pays for those legal fees. So um, they do get put back to um, the residents or the homeowners. And then um, and then gas fee 45 um, is back for this fiscal year or for next fiscal year. Is it possible to divide this in half and charge half of it each year so you don't get that? We certainly can. I know they've, they've offered that to us. If you would like to have that done, I'm yeah. sure Sarah can arrange it. that. Yeah. Maybe like next year, not mm -hmm. Obviously, you can do it going forward. Sure. Yeah. John, you had a question? Um, the 2024 31,540 is 41,540 on the financial statements. Mm -hmm. There's a difference, right? No. Uh, where? Where are you at? Huh? On the January financial. For account fifty four ten, it's forty one five forty. On here, it's thirty one five forty. Oh, you're right. Yep. Um, I'll explain that. So Sarah has, uh, as the treasurer, has the opportunity when we do the tax rate recap in the fall to add more money for tax taking. And she did, in fact, add more money for tax taking this year in the amount of $10,000 because we have a bunch of properties that we want to uh, land a low values that we want to move. Um, with that said, uh, I think we're going to wait with that until the next fiscal year. Just as Sarah had a really good reason for it. She felt like it was better to wait until we were done with the tax collection for the year and then um, go back and and do those. Um, maybe you can explain it better than I can. Sure. So um, my predecessor had started the land below value process um, a little over two years ago. Once that gets approved, you only have two years to auction off properties. That didn't happen. So I worked um, with uh, DOR to get those reapproved. So now the clock starts again. I now have two years. Um, so we were hoping to do that as soon as possible. But after talking to um, the tax title attorney, it makes sense to wait until this fiscal year is done because right now there's part taxes in tax title and then there's also the current fiscal year 24. So we want to get past the fiscal year 24 tax due date. That way everything is in tax title at that point. So when we go to have an auction, we'll know exactly what's owed. There won't be a tax title total and a current real estate total. So we want to have everything be together. So that so that ten thousand dollars will just go back. What we haven't spent will go back into um, free cash. Right. I have no problem with how the money's being spent or the budget, but I am a little concerned about the process. Who approves the ten thousand dollars? I do. Uh, well, actually, really, the assessors do in the end. Because I mean, at the town meeting, it was voted to be thirty one thousand five forty. It's it's so, one of those things that DOR allows treasurers to do. I don't know, it does. Um, okay. Margaret, if you can explain that I mean, any better, but it's all right. Yeah, it's just one. It's it's. There aren't any other forms to allow anybody to add anything except that one. <laughs> so it's that particular account. They let you do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is it, Go ahead. Is it a tax title? Do you have a tax title revolving fund? We don't. You don't have a tax yeah. title revolving fund. Okay. Because I'm wondering, well, it's probably too early to ask that. Um, so with a tax title revolving fund, I'm just wondering if as you... Um, Put properties in tax title as you take properties and you actually uh, see some revenues from these if you could put them back in and and fund um some of these operating the operating budget costs possibly um i know yeah. it's treated differently than the standard revolving fund um but i'm not a treasure collector okay. so 
Well, it's, so, it's just something to think, something something to think we, about. We can, yeah, uh, certainly something we can research with your yeah. that down. <laughs> um, because, because when, I mean, we've not taken in any revenues yet. I mean, okay. we've not sold anything ever before. So now this okay. is our opportunity to actually do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, it has been moved and seconded for Treasurer Collector Expense Fund 145 5410 at 39,775. Any discussion? Go ahead. I would say, um, given the projected um, revenue shortfall as we move forward through this process, this is going to be all of these accounts would be open for further discussion if need be, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you for saying that. I, I meant to say that. I mean to say that every time we have somebody come that that this is an approval, but all of the budgets will be probably looked at again at the end. So, um, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, six zero zero. Um, since we're going into tab five, can I have you stop at the at the veterans district assessment on our way to Sarah's oh. vet, veterans benefits? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one that we should have voted last week, but I just got the budget this afternoon. Okay. It's uh, 543-5400 for 15505 We have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve Veterans District Assessment Account 543-5400 for $15,505. We have a second. Second. Would you like to give us a little explanation? Well, this is just uh, the assessment from the Veterans District for handling um, the uh, stipends, I guess you would call it, that we give to the veterans, the veterans benefits. Um, so... It has gone up um, a considerable percentage, but um, I guess nothing we can do about it. Just an assessment. Thing. Any questions or discussion? Okay. Go ahead. I see that the revenues actually are slightly decreased as well. Is it? Is that correct? Like, right. Well, the revenues are from uh, the actual benefits. Uh, that's that. Okay. Right. Okay, so yeah. there's a slight increase. Okay, so it's nineteen eighty two, one thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars. Okay, so should that correlate, Margaret? Well, I when I look at veterans' um, expenses, I always look at the um, the revenues that we're getting from the state. So I, I think I see a correlation. I do. Okay, personally. Okay, I know there's a correlation from the benefits to because that should be seventy five percent of the benefits. That it is. yeah. It is, and there's a what an eighteen month lag before we actually see the veterans benefits mm -hmm. come back, right? Um, okay. Still, a, it's still an increase, and before we saw today's updated expense reports and and revenue projections, if if free cash funding were to remain the same to the general fund operating budget we'd be starting with a structural deficit of $35,000 roughly. And now that is increased, I think, tonight, but not a discussion for tonight. I'm just noting. Oh, yeah, until we Say get that again. school budget, it's hard I to... Said, I said, you know, going you through... It's, it, if we were to estimate that all the budgets that hadn't come in as of last meeting come in at 2.5% increase, and so far it's trending above that, yeah. but if they did... And we were to use, say, $50,000 in free cash again to try to plug the hole, we have a we have a deficit that will be on the FY25 budget of $35,000. Right. Okay. I'm yeah. with you now. It's growing I thought you were talking specifically veterans, but you're not. This no, is like the, sorry, the overall, overall budget. Okay. It's, I'm it's, with you. It's growing. All right. That's without capital items, too, right? It is. Yeah, exactly. Correctly. Yeah. It's just operating. All right. Um, any other veterans, any other discussion on the veterans district assessment? No. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded for veterans district assessment 543-5400 at 15,505. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? It's unanimous, six zero zero. Okay. So next page is Sarah's <laughs> Veterans Benefits, 543 5410 for 22000 Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Veterans Benefits account 543-5410 for $22,000. We have a second. Second by Discussion? So I receive a bill uh, from Upper Pioneer uh, Veteran Services every month. Uh, we currently have two residents in town who are on it. Um, I then pay the bill and I go online to certify it and we are reimbursed 75% of that amount. So um, it's there's nothing I can do. I can't decide or pick the dollar amount. Um, they decide for us. Um, and I also don't know if, if another resident uh, may appear someday on that list. But at the moment, we have two um, that have been on there for quite a while. Um, so I've just taken the most recent bills and multiplied them by uh, 12 and given a little increase to figure out uh, the dollar amount. Um, so, but like I said, we do get reimbursed um, the 75% eventually. <laughs> Um, reimbursed by state or federal? State. Through, through the cherry sheet. Yeah. Um, I don't understand ahead, what you're doing at the, in the explanation. Oh, she's just showing how she came up with her increase to come up with, with the 22000 I've just looked at previous bills. I keep track of every single month. So I'm just keeping track of what percentage they usually increase over about a 12 month period. So the last time um, I looked at a 12 month period, it was about 6%. So I'm just trying to figure out oh, okay. what it could go up. You took the January bill times 12. Oh, 6%. Okay, got it. Thank you. Well, this is one of it. So this accurately reflects the cost for the current two uh, beneficiaries, right? Um, so this is one of those lines that could change at any time if we have an addition of, of a veteran. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're budgeting only for the two existing beneficiaries because these um, you know, surprise additions can come anytime during the course of the year. And of course, you'd probably have to go to reserve fund to. And that's what we have a good, healthy reserve yeah. fund for. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? It's unanimous, 600. Zero, zero. Next. Oh, oh, the fun ones. Uh, debt. Mm. Tab seven. <laughs> So uh, the first one is 710-5900 for maturing debt. So this is the principal payments uh, for $401,679. Do we have a motion? <clears throat> I move. Yeah. <laughs> we have a second. Second. All right. Okay, we're ready. So um, the garage is the garage. We're paying that till 2034. That never changes. The USDA, the two bottom ones, the USDA first bond and then the second bond, those are set as well. So those are pretty standard um, payments. I, I so did those... Um... The first one went up from 38 to 41. Is that going to, are we going to see that changing every year or is it like now it's 41, it's going to stay 41? So, so this is one of those where the principal amount changes. So, so the, the full payment never changes, but the principal amount will continue to go up and the interest oh, okay. will continue to go oh, down. Okay. Got it. Yeah. That's just got it, the got way it. the USDA right. uh, does those particular loans, I guess. Like a house money. Um, there, there's a, a spreadsheet that that I handed out to you earlier where we just kind of um, kind of plugged in 
each year and what it would look like. I know FY, just ignore FY24 because part of those payments have already been made. And so I didn't include the um, payments that we had already made. I did this as of today's date. Um, but you can see how adding the library is going to make this explode for a few years until the garage is paid off. Um, so I bring that up because just, just for, because we did this last year and the year before, I just plugged in a $400,000 payment on our principal, a, a pay down of our ban for the wastewater treatment plant of which a hundred thousand goes into, into the general fund budget here. Um, maybe you would want to consider paying down more on that ban this year, knowing what the next few years might look like. And then maybe our town loan uh, for the wastewater treatment plant will be a little bit less over those few years. I don't know that it's going to make a lot of difference, but um, I just thought, you know, we'd throw it out there and see what you think. Um, right now it's 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 set with a $400,000 pay down. That's the town loan on your spreadsheet? Yes. The band? Yep, so right now it's the town loan is at 6.8 million basically. And so we have it if if we were to pay down four hundred thousand, the rest of that would be at six million four hundred thousand. So that line on FY twenty six for one hundred and forty three thousand seven sixty four is principal and interest based on that four hundred thousand dollar pay down. If that makes sense. And that is just the town's portion. So you can see over to the right, you'll see the town loan for the wastewater treatment plant. So the, the principal amount owed line, that 6.8 million, that's the total enterprise and yes. town. That, yeah. That's the total amount. Yeah. Okay. So if we increased... So the goal, the the idea behind increasing it now would be we would have sort of a a ramp up to when the library shows up and it would help us. Right. And you'd everything. have less less to pay on the town loan for the wastewater treatment plant. And then maybe we wouldn't be going into the million dollar number um, for those few years. <laughs> is, there, kind of shocking. is there a possibility that you'd be able to... Um, amortize this oh, oh well maybe not amortize it but if the town give us some scenarios so if the town were to pay down an extra hundred thousand dollars on the wastewater treatment plant um ahead of the library debt um coming up in 26 what that's going to look like because we'll have a kind of nine year span in which they're we're mm -hmm. paying, we're paying both. service for yeah. both. so is there a way that we can kind of figure out uh, I I can you know, do the, I can certainly do those scenarios. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it, wouldn't it more or less look like just moving everything down one line on that on that column? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Paying, uh, so we're talking about instead of instead of having a six point four million dollar loan, you might have a six point three million dollar loan or a six point two million dollar loan. Um, uh, it does, if you get to the wastewater treatment plant, uh, when we get to that, you'll see that that right now the numbers look pretty good and it's pretty doable. Um, we can take more money out of retained earnings to pay the higher higher pay down now. Um, that was my next question. <laughs> yeah. Was, what does that do to the sewer bills? Because right, right now it fits really nicely with $250,000 taken out of, out of retained earnings. We could certainly do 300,000 or even 350,000 out of retained earnings. And I think we're still in pretty good shape. Um, That's from the enterprise. From the enterprise fund. Yeah. Um, 
but I can play with the numbers a little bit and come back to you. I, I wasn't real sure that you would want to, to vote this today anyway, but um, we also had long discussions today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spent most of our day talking about the library. <laughs> And what those scenarios might look like, we have a cash flow, but the cash flow needs to be adjusted. And so literally those numbers are just kind of plugged in, assuming we were only going to pay interest for the first um, the first year, the second year pay, you know, a half a year's worth of interest and a little bit of a pay down and then bond for the rest. But who knows what that rest is really going to be because they're working on the fundraising and so on and so forth. But the, the good news is with the library, um, we think we can get through the end of this fiscal year without borrowing. The one we're currently in. Yes. And we're thinking, we're hoping that we're going to, so uh, Candace is on board with, with um, uh, working with uh, their fundraising person to make sure that the people know that the town is going to be in need June, July, August for the fundraising money. So if they could get their pledges paid, then we can wait to borrow, hopefully, until September, which would mean that we'd only borrow for a year before the project is done, and then kind of wrap it up and maybe roll it into the wastewater treatment plant borrowing. You know, that's all, that's all way up in the air. But um, it was certainly a plan that our financial advisor liked and uh, we liked because <laughs> then we didn't have to budget in fiscal 25 for any borrowing. The less borrowing we have to do, the better. And I and I made that point to Candace so that she can go out there and start working on, on collecting those funds. Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of money is, is the retained earnings on the enterprise fund invested, the excess cash? Like you have CDs with it, or is it money? Oh, there's market? it's it's in a number of different accounts, really. What is it That's making any money? Is, is there an interest rate associated with? Yeah, they are. Towns aren't really allowed to make money on investments, um, <laughs> so I can't remember the 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 term uh, arbitrage. Yes. Arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, with the, with, with the borrowed money, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the rest of it, you certainly want to make money on. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering if if you pay if by paying off the loan earlier at pretty low interest rates, if we're shooting ourselves in the foot with the money we're making with the invested retained earnings. That's all. Something to think about. Good thought. Yes, go for it. Just um, what what is encompassed in this? Can you talk into the what is encompassed in the six point eight million town loan? Is it is it the twenty five percent that the town is paying on this waste? No, no, that's that six point eight is the total loan. Total loan left on the that's that's what we are borrowing right now until December of two thousand twenty four. Okay. Yep. And does it ever turn into one large loan payment? You've got two different USDAs. And they're never going to be in part of this other thing, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the so so the the wastewater treatment plant upgrade is being paid with a grant from USDA, a first loan from USDA, a second loan from USDA, and whatever the town has to borrow to finish it off. And that assumption is made that we're spending every dollar of that 22 million whether that happens or not i don't know but because hmm. i thought we were like within three hundred thousand of spending the whole amount um is that not correct? i i don't know no? okay. yeah i don't know they keep putting together change orders i think they're trying to get it spent we're in for a tough time we're in for some challenges coming up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. Uh, it, it's pretty scary going yeah. going from an, a normal debt payment of six hundred some thousand to uh, a million is is big. It's pretty big. Yeah. Um. 
borrowing authorizations obviously are not are not included here. Um, well, there's only there's only one borrowing authorization that hasn't been issued, and that's okay. the library. That's at the end. That's that's the bottom there. Okay. okay. And then the emergency road repairs as well, right? This, so that hasn't, there's no, been no borrowing incurred on that. No well. borrowing on that. And I'm hoping to God that we don't have to borrow any. Yeah. I'm I'm planning on that. Right, Tim? So We're not borrowing anything on those road repairs. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, Sarah and I were talking about that this afternoon and we really don't know. But, you know, in the end, if you have... 200,000 or 300,000 that you have to borrow. That's kind of silly. So why not try to find funds somewhere to yeah. pay the rest of it off? Okay. And keep our fingers crossed for more support from the state. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So I'm sort of feeling like we should wait until we get through more budgets and have a more complete picture before we make that decision. Okay. Um, does anybody else agree with that? I can put, I can put that? together some more scenarios and then um, Dan Pallotta will be getting back to us at the end of March okay. um, with a more updated cash flow so that we have a better idea. And then um, we'll be meeting with our financial advisor mid-April to talk about what the plan is, but what, what we really need to do as far mm -hmm. as the library goes. And hopefully that that can be put off until September. That's that's really what our goal and our hope is. Um, Julie, I, um, the, I don't see how the other budgets will have much effect on this. Our well, that's, that's bottom true. line is oh yeah you're right that's it's debt excluded because it's it's debt excluded okay good point and with the exception of those scenarios if if you were to put some of the retained earnings on the debt um, well that won't affect our that won't affect the debt exclusion or anything right. you know that won't affect the taxes um, but I can certainly work through a couple of scenarios. So if we wanted to pay off more of the town loan piece, how, how much are you recommending? Or do you want to like work through it and come back? Yeah, you know, I hmm. the thought just occurred to me as I was preparing this that, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should consider that since um, right now fiscal 25 is even less than fiscal 24. Not by much, but a little bit. So, I don't know, uh, 200,000 maybe, maybe less. I'm not talking about a big amount, but okay. I don't know. It, I, that's why I threw it out to see what the committee thought, what the select board might think. I was just wondering if you could, when you did these scenarios, you explained what is adding 100,000 to this make as a difference on the subsequent payments? So if you add 100,000, it's X. If you add 200,000, it's Y. Right, and I can do that pretty yeah. easily and prepare several different different um, spreadsheets for us to look at. Yeah, that'd be okay. okay. Why, why don't we, does anybody else have I move thoughts? the table the motion. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Awesome, right. tabling. Okay. Uh, any discussion? What about approving and coming back to it? What's that? We could. I was just saying. Uh, we could just approve it and then come back, it to it. come back to it. Well, I, th I would rather see. I mean, you're, you're planning regardless to go through and, and I, I do am, some yeah, other I, scenarios. I, I think and... it makes sense to increase that from from the usual. Yeah. So I think regardless, we're going to come back and talk about it again. Okay. I agree. Um, and maybe we do that after after the Tritown Beach next week before the select board budgets review. I don't know, but. Oh, okay. We can add it next week. Okay. Okay. So 
It has been moved and seconded that we table this motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, so we're gonna skip it until next week. And so then we so then we might as well skip the interest. The interest as well, yeah. Although you know what? <laughs> yeah. Interest isn't gonna change. Uh, because the interest oh, because, is set. yeah, that's just principle that we would be adding. Right. Here. The okay. only thing that would be uh, a change to this is if we did end up having to borrow for the repair of the roads. That's. Um, but we aren't going to know that by next week. So. No, no. So we might as well vote this one, right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have a motion? I move to recommend 751-5900 for 205000 $205,704. Do a second? I'll second that. Discussion. These are all set. Um, there isn't anything to change. We've borrowed the money in December that's due next December for the ban. The USDA loans are set and the garage loan is obviously set. So they're... Mm -hmm. um, these numbers come directly from the amortization schedules. Yep. Perfect. And everything on this sheet is debt excluded. Correct. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous 600. So the very next one is 752-5900. Um you know, this, this hasn't changed in years and sometimes we pay. Um, so, so this is, this is kind of a, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll let you move it first. It's, um, yep. For $5,000. I move to recommend 752-5900 in the amount of $5,000. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Go for it. So in 2022, uh, we had an abatement that was due to Verizon, I believe. Is it Verizon? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Sounds right. A very large abatement. So we had to pay interest on the abatement. So that's kind of what this is. You know, it's it's rare that we have to borrow otherwise. So this, this handles any interest that we have to pay on abatements, um, any interest we have to pay on peer review money that is left over after a peer review is done. Um, trying to think of what other scenario. I think those are pretty much basically it. Mind unpacking some of that a little, an, an abatement? Right. So it was an abatement for um, like a, a personal property tax that Verizon paid three years previous or four years previous, we had to pay interest on that. We had to pay that back to Verizon with interest. Don't abatements have to be applied for by January 31st? This so, is something that was in the um, um, appellate court. Is that it what they was. call it? Yes, yeah. this is a court, court settlement in favor of Verizon. But, um, but do we know oh, if it, anything that's hanging out there now? I'm just thinking maybe we can knock some money off the operating budget by reducing this is we're in goal like conversation you know if there's no abatements out there you know there's always something sitting out there um i think the assessors said there might be sixty thousand dollars worth of abatements for something and i don't know what and i don't know if it was something specific Usually they don't end up being anything, but you know, if it is something that you you would like to reduce, um, we'd probably be fine with that. I guess if we had to borrow, um, if we had to do any revenue anticipation notes, we can come for reserve fund money. And it's not overall; it's not a whole lot of money no. either. But no, it's not. But you know, maybe maybe. Two thousand is a is a better number. I don't know. Should we talk to the assessors? We certainly can. It looked to me on the revenue sheets that 
there is no assessor's overlay surplus. It is actually Correct. negative. So no, that's so that that's that's not... the anticipated overlay that they will will um, institute with the tax recap in fiscal twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But they have nothing hanging out there from prior fiscal years. There is some from prior fiscal years, but you know, since since that was all combined, it's mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not a lot. I I personally would be inclined to approve it as is uh, for now and then revisit it, revisit it if need be. Only because these, you know, there have been amounts close to $5,000 that have been spent in the past. Yeah, it does seem like if there is something, you need the 5000 Okay. You know. So, John, do you want to make a motion to change the amount right now? We have a motion on the floor for five thousand. Or are you happy enough with leaving it? Or I can go either way. I, I'm just, I guess, as a committee, do we want to reduce it? I would then, mean, go ahead. It goes back into free cash. Over. It goes back into free right. cash if it's not used. I would lean towards leaving it, but. Didn't, didn't we, we had one last week that we were like, well, we'll keep this in mind. And, you know, at the end, we're desperate. A <laughs> hundred dollars here, a hundred dollars there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this would be a couple thousand is better than whatever. I was going to say, this is, this is a bigger amount than what we were talking about last week. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> bigger piece of salami to slice. <laughs> but then it goes the other way, too. It's a bigger, bigger amount to, to <clears throat> then. If we have to, to re, yeah, yeah, to recomes out at the other side. Mm -hmm. Can we have yeah. a show of hands if we might want to change it? I'm happy leaving. Is that okay? Um, Desk? Yeah. Protocol? Yeah. Nobody wants to change it, then let's bring it to a vote. Right? All right. Any further discussion? Anybody? All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 600. Zero, zero. All right, let's go to tab nine. For all those nice benefits. So the first one is nine. Oh, uh, the first one that you're going to go to is 911 5400, which is the Franklin Regional Retirement. We have a motion. Make a motion to approve uh, Franklin City, Franklin County Regional Retirement Account 9-11-5400 for $646,145. Do you have a second? I will second that. Discussion? Oh, this is one of those budgets that didn't go up very much. <laughs> that was like 0.9% <laughs> sold. <laughs> <laughs> But any um, discussion on this, why the retirement is staying? Yeah, I, you know, the, um, I remember right, it was, what was it, 24.14% or was it 24? Yep, 24.14. Oh, yeah, you have it on there. Um, and then, of course, we calculate what the offset would be from um, South County EMS, South County Senior Center, and the wastewater treatment plant. And those, you know, are set. We, When the bill comes we charge those departments those exact same amounts. So there's actually went up quite a bit. Yes, all of those departments have been going up. Because so they have more people all had or... personnel? Yeah. Yes. Um, South County EMS, yes, that's right. They added those two positions at one point in time, right? Or one position, I can't remember. Uh, so the senior has doubled. Yep, the senior center... Um, the uh, one unbenefited position became a full-time benefited position and um, <clears throat> the senior center director wasn't full-time at one point in time and That's is great. now completely full-time. And then with the wastewater treatment plant, we did hire a chief operator and two new operators, I think. I mean, we were, we were really down for a while. So, um, so that's where it should be there. And this is like a multi-year running average thing or something? It, or it is for our assessment. Um, but for what we charge to the departments, 
to keep it simple for us at the very beginning, we just took the, the previous calendar year. So Sarah took calendar year 2023 salaries and applied it times the 24.14% oh. just to be simple. And, and we've just left it that way that we're not going to change, change and, and be inconsistent at this point. So we, we do it that way. So the assessment itself went up seven and a half percent. Thank goodness for the offsets. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of it's because of those people. Yes. In, right. <clears throat> Who else is in the Franklin County retirement other than like, if, like it's just yeah. like other than Deerfield? Well, I mean, or, other than the the ones that are listed, the scams and the wastewater. Well, you have all of the the town employees who are benefited. You have all of the teachers' aides who are benefited. Police, police. So, with all, like the last year, we voted for like uh, when we approved the library, they they changed someone to full time as that person in this too. So that's where that that's where the yep. line would be, right. I right. somebody from 19 hours to 21 hours and they became benefited. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really a full time employee. But oh, I meant, yeah, that it was one, something yes. like that. Sorry. Yep. It was. Yep. Yep. I, but, but, but they but became we, benefited. They became so benefited. Right. Yes, right. That's retirement. We'll I wonder yes. if that's where this person is. Well, that too, you know, and, and, and I think they do. Um, Franklin Regional Retirement does give me a breakdown once a year. Um, so that we know what our what our contribution is for chapter 70 and there's probably 250 to 270,000 of this that's that's school uh employees no way we can not what's that there's no way we can not <laughs> <laughs> just understanding what our face yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? No, I, I have a question actually that's not related to this budget, but in the budget memo, you you say um, there's a, a line in there that says something like, if you have discussion of your budget increase, please supply that. All of those comments, like these comments that are written here in the explanation, Most is the that time. where that comes from? Yeah. And all of that gets passed to us through Correct. this box right here. Correct. Okay. There are a few departments that actually do a whole, you know, budget or a memo of regarding their budget, like the library. Mm -hmm. But um, but most people just put it on here. Okay. Thanks. Any further discussion? All right. It's been long enough. I'm going to restate. Franklin County Regional Retirement has been moved and second in seconded, um, account number 9115400 for $646,145. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, six zero zero. All right, the next one is 912-5400. Workers comp. Do you have a motion? Okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> uh, I make a motion to approve workers' compensation budget account 912-5400 for $51,370. Second. Discussion? Oh, I don't know. Sarah, what do you want to say about this? What much do you say? <laughs> um, we used a five and a half salary increase. Um, is what we're all expected. Um, from the compensation schedule um, using the calendar year 23 um, totals without overtime. Um, and then we all, do you want to go on about the credits that we usually receive? Yeah, we usually, we usually get quite a few credits, although we've had some workers' comp claims recently. I don't know how that'll affect things, okay. but, uh, but we usually do get quite a bit in credits. We don't ever understand why or what but we're glad to have them. <laughs> um, so this is this is always just you know a, an estimate as to best as as best as we can do, and it's usually a little high. But um, 
I think actually this year we're pretty close to that 48,000, aren't we? I, I don't have my, my uh, month end uh, report with me. So, so um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recall um, how this one works, but right. so the workers comp uh, insurance premium, um, you, the town needs to provide the number of employees covered by workers comp. So that sets the premium base and then workers comp um, or Maya in this case would calculate um, additional premium costs based on claims. Is that right? That I don't know. Oh, okay. I think, uh, well, the reason I'm, we get, we get, we get audited that. once a year for workers okay. comp, but, um, and sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive. You okay. know, sometimes we end up having, so I think, all right. So um, I think I'm, what I'm trying to do is just correlate this line with the Franklin County Retirement System line in that the costs increase as personnel numbers increase. And this one adds in, of course, claims. So um, I'm telling the Finance Committee something I'm sure they already know, but uh, this is one of those um, those lines that is directly impacted by staffing. Number increase. of employees and... And all of their salaries. The, the clerical is not um, percentage wise is pretty low. Yeah. Um, the experience rate is that the yeah. claim, yeah, claims history. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, this relates to the previous um, and this one. The offsets to skims. Okay, so we bill skims a certain amount. Mm -hmm. That gets built into their budget. It comes back around and we pay 50% of this mm -hmm. yep. because we don't raise enough money. We don't get enough earnings. So I'm just trying to understand that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the reason there's no South County Senior Center offset is because they're not positions that have very high. Right. It's just a um, clerical workers position comp. and you can't break those out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so this would sort of reflect the number of positions that have been added where there's actually a chance of getting injured. <laughs> like yeah. wastewater treatment plant operators and EMSs. Right. Right. So hence, hence they're not going up more. Work. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of those kids can all oh, there are injuries there as well. <laughs> my daughter broke her arm. As a Anybody can get injured. <laughs> my daughter broke her arm as a uh, children's librarian. Yeah. Paper cuts. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh dear. All right. Any further discussion? No. Uh, moved and seconded for workers' comp account number nine twelve fifty four hundred at fifty one thousand three hundred seventy dollars. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous six zero zero. All right. The next budget is unemployment insurance nine one three dash fifty four hundred. And that was not approved. <laughs> it just sucked. Yeah. I don't know why that's in there. I moved yeah. to recommend 913 for $20,000. Second. Well, how do we discuss this one, Sarah? Well, we at <laughs> least removed $2,000 from the management company line. Um, our company, UTMC, merged with Maya, who we already had, and uh, we no longer get uh, a quarterly fee. So we could at least take $2,000 off of that, which is great. So, and, yeah. and the insurance and, costs, it's always it's always hard to, to know um, when you're going to pay unemployment. This year, we've paid $3,000 so far. Yeah. You just never know. Um, last year, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, we paid quite a bit. We paid, um, last year though, was that the number that included the payoff that- Oh, the interest. With the interest, it yeah. might have. I don't remember. Oh, we had to go back and pay old stuff oh, off. Yes. Yeah. 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 So really our, our claims last year were probably less than 5,000. Um, but you can see in previous years, we've paid more. Most of that was due to the COVID mm -hmm. thing. Um, but this is one of those budgets you just never know. And 90% of the time it's from the school. Unlike oh, okay. 
Um, the private sector pays so much a month. That's, right. We, we, we don't do that, right? No. We have to pay actual? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked into the actual because I didn't understand it myself this year. And um, my rep at UTMC explained that, I don't know if it's the state that sets the rule, but it's 2% of your gross pay and that would put us at about 80 to 90 grand so this is a lot less than if we were to do the okay. percentage. I like this plan better. Yes. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Any further discussion or questions? Uh just noting here um on the bottom on the totals so Fincom is making a record would be oh. putting a recommendation on 20, it's right? Just yeah, no, this this spreadsheet uh, particular page is uh, messed up, looks like. It's, those, those should be blank. Just, just ignore those. those three. Got it. Yeah, okay. please. <laughs> At least finish right here. The, these are like leftover. You can get these three, these oh. three boxes. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? That's unanimous, six zero zero. Okay, the very next one is oh boy. Mm -hmm. Um health insurance for the town, nine one four dash fifty four hundred. Oh goodness. So the school is on the next next page. Oh, you handed that out tonight, a revised one. Right? Yep. So. Yes, we did. All right, do we have a motion? Nobody wants to move this one. <laughs> I make a motion to recommend nine one four fifty four hundred, um, in the amount of four hundred nine thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars. I know it's hard to say. We have a second. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, discussion. All right, so all of our HMO and PPO plans are going up eight percent. Um. And I used the most recent bill, uh, February of 2024, and then I used the new rates that will be starting July 1. Um, we also have two new hires um, coming up. And I also have been made aware of two current employees who will be utilizing open enrollment. Um, so there's four new um, employees that will be potentially being on, uh, will be added to our bill starting in July. Um, all right, there's two more um, employees than we had last year. Um, there was a new hire and uh, someone took advantage of open enrollment last year. So um, we're basically up, gonna be up six more than uh, we were last year. And uh, a family plan, um, is ranges anywhere between sixteen and eighteen thousand per person for a family plan. Um, so if everyone was to pick a family plan, that's eighty thousand dollars right there for the four. And that's our cost. potential. The sixty-five percent. Yeah, and that's the sixty-five percent of our cost. Um, so I really didn't. Um, normally, we add a, a larger buffer um, in case anyone else is hired or in case anyone else takes advantage of open enrollment. But I, I just couldn't make this number go up any higher. So it's really exactly if those four take the insurance, it will cover them. But if anyone else takes advantage of open enrollment or some department decides to hire somebody else, then we're going to be off. So it's as tight as I could make it. Um, Rates went up eight percent. Is it the plan? Is it part of their contract? Any benefited employee can take advantage. But the way the plan is structured, is it part of their contract? Do you see the ratios that the um, town will pay sixty five percent and the employee will pay thirty five percent? Is that written into um, collective bargaining agreements, for example? I. Um, I would yes. assume yeah. so because it's it's in our bylaws. Um, yes, yeah. has anything different? Right. Also, like the co-pays, that's not so. That's not part of the contract of the teachers. No, that the insurance example. trust handles those, John. Pardon? They make those determinations. Yeah, we're part of the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust, and they're the ones that come up with all those. 
So there's not it's not negotiable then really. No, unfortunately not. Are there any potential retirements or employee huh? decreases that um, for the school? Cool. <laughs> the school, yes, we're not there yet. But yeah. um for the town, no, right. I mean, maybe one, but um I haven't been made aware of anybody else. So <laughs> I if someone did somebody retire, retired, then the somebody cost would go retired. down. So then that would give us a little buffer in uh -huh. case someone was to add. But otherwise, there's really no buffer. Well, yeah, if somebody retires, we could be paying 50% of theirs. And the new and then person the new might, right. might take insurance. So that's, well, you'll see that when we get to the school. school yeah. so that's, not, that's not actually good. Well, well this is, this is, not really. this is big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, it is. Nobody hire anyone. <laughs> well, this is the discussion we were having last year, but just yeah. when, in the library discussion about changing the person to yeah, benefit, well, one more hour, was two more hours or whatever it was, of, and then part of that discussion, their benefit, and line. all of a sudden you're paying retirement and benefits. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah I would like to add that I don't think that discussion really happened very well at SCEMS when they went from eight to 10 full-time employees and you know, not only you're adding, you know, full-time benefited employee and, and yeah, I just yeah. think we need to be more careful about it. I think I wasn't as aware of it last year as I, I am now. Uh, you know, but again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying what, what we all know, um, it, you know, these, these dramatic, um, um, non-discretionary cost increases are going to affect discretionary lines in the long run. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just don't see how we're going to be able to avoid further discussions like that. Nope. You agree? I guarantee it. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Any further depressing discussion on this? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, ready to vote. Yeah, further discussion. What if we just don't approve it? What happens? What? I look at it. It's too much money. I don't approve it. Where does <laughs> it Where does it go from there? I I don't think. We, I mean, we don't have any choice on this. We don't the have... only way to make this go down is to to eliminate positions. I think. Right? Maybe maybe that needs to be done. You know, it's an alternative. I'm not suggesting we do that. Don't get me wrong. No, but I think when we get to the end of this whole budget discussion and we have the full budget in front of us and we're having that conversation, that's the point where we start saying, well, what can we do to, to get this within the prop two and a half? Oh, gosh, we're at 6.15 already. Yeah. All right. Any further yep. discussion? <laughs> no. All right. All those in favor? John, I can't see if your hand's up. It's not up. Okay. <laughs> All those opposed? All right. Any abstentions? No. So that's five, one, zero. That passes. <clears throat> Let's do group insurance school. Okay. <clears throat> do we have a motion? Next page. Oh. Yep. 914-5410. Yeah. I move to recommend 914-5410 in the amount of seven. Seven hundred eighty-one thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars. We have a second. This numbers keep it quick. I'll second it for purposes of discussion. <laughs> discussion. So same thing here. Plans are up eight percent. Um, I use the most recent bill times the new rate. Um, there are currently six additional employees enrolled in health insurance than there were at this time last year. Um, four out of six of those are family plans. So again, that's sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars for each of those employees. Um, there was two that enrolled through open and en open enrollment last year. Um, I don't know what could happen this year. Um, I am aware of three potential retirees. Their costs would go down a little bit, but then I'm assuming the school is then going to hire three new people potentially to replace them who could then also take insurance. Um, so on that one, um, the buffer is a lot lower, um, seeing 
three of those retirees uh, would make our bill go down a little bit. Um, so the buffer's not as much, but um, it's still a huge increase um, just because there's so many additional employees that are being hired and everyone is taking insurance when they get hired. Well, again, this is just going to affect discretionary lines. It's, it's, uh, it could be devastating to some. I, this is, these are huge increases. They are. Yep. I think my very cursory read of the school budget was that um, they're reducing a couple of class sizes, which would imply a reduction that isn't going to be replaced. In other words, they're taking, you know, three grade levels, three second grade classes, say, and they're going to only have two. So I don't know that it's a guarantee that the when you say you've heard of some retirement, they're going to be replaced. No. Maybe they, they might I, not. I'd be surprised yeah. if they're adding, given that there mm -hmm. are those reductions happening. We actually don't know until we. No. So, I mean, at the moment, um, I've used the most current bill and I've used the new rate. And the only buffer that I have in is a $20,000 buffer. So, that's really if one person gets hired and they take a family plan that's going to take the whole buffer. So there's really, I, I did not increase that one because I'm expecting three to retire. So um, there's really not a big buffer. There's really only room for one person to take a, a family plan. So if they do actually hire more, then we might be in trouble. This includes a, an additional three people on the plan? No, so um, this dollar amount were six people higher than we were last year. That's why the total is so much. But in that total yep. is a twenty thousand dollar buffer for an additional person. For an additional person. So right. if but I'm just saying, so you've already included six new hires in this budget. No, they've already been. They're already, they're already on. There. They're there. Already I'm just saying from compared to last year at this time, oh, okay. we're up six people. That's why the bill is up so high because we're already up six people. So those people are already included in the total. Okay. And then just the buffer that I have is 20,000 and that could be wiped out with one family plan. Just to be clear, this is the elementary school, right? Correct. Casey, you had a comment? Most of what David said, you couldn't hear online. Oh, okay. I think you get the gist now, but when you were when he was talking, I couldn't hear it online, which means nobody else oh, okay. watching this they may not be able to understand it. But I think I get the gist of it. He was basically saying that um, it looks like some of the grades in the elementary school are going from three classes per grade to two classes per grade, in which case there may be, if somebody retires, there may be um, not a new person. Hired elementary to replace that position or something. I see. But we don't know because we, we haven't seen them. Right. You'll have a little bit more idea after that first hearing with um, the school committee, right? Yeah, next week. Yep. Thank you. Any further discussion on this one? No. So we've no noted that this includes a $20,000 buffer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? That's unanimous six zero zero. Last one. I think we're going to make it. Yeah, I think we can do this one fairly quickly. Um, it's the um, Medicare insurance 916-5400. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve Medicare insurance account. Nine one six fifty four hundred for one hundred twenty thousand oh eighty nine. Second. Okay. Discussion. So this one is just using um, payroll figures, calendar year twenty twenty three totals. Uh, we then used uh, four point seven five percent to cover rate increases and uh, the potential new hires um, that are expected to begin. You know, in 2023, um, we were a little over budget. 
and we had budgeted more for 2024, but Sarah and I were looking at that and I think we're gonna be short for 24, which is partly why 25 looks a little higher too, because we think that we, we were under budgeting at that point too in 24. <clears throat> okay. Any discussion? Yeah. No, there's not much we can do about it. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? That passes unanimously 600. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you very much, much, Sarah, for coming. Yeah, go ahead, you. So um, this is in the regional school system. Uh, this relates to our personnel board's decision to recommend a 2% um, COLA. And what if another community rec recommends a different COLA? And how do how does that get handled in the school system? Yeah, in the frontier regional. So there's four towns involved, and they all have to vote. And their personnel boards could come back with different recommendations. Is that possible? It's so different. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a different public entity. Frontier is its own operating. entity, so they can set their own cost of living increase. Okay, it's not so we don't have anything to do with it. Okay. I, okay. I just have one other bit that um, I was asked about the definition of a quorum a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I looked through the town bylaws and there is no general definition of a quorum. A couple of committees have specified quorums at the town meeting, but otherwise there's no general definition. So the standard definition, according to both Robert's Rules of Order and the U.S. Constitution, is a simple majority of the members is a quorum. In other words, 50% plus one. And once you have a quorum, voting is by members present, not total membership. So 50% plus one of whoever shows okay. up. Yeah. Thank you. One last, oh, we have, we're going to take like three more minutes. You, you guys are, you can take, take off. Um, Thank you. So next week, we have police, tri town, and select board budgets. And we're also going to look at maybe the, the um, debt again. Um, if anybody has any specific questions for information, we would like those people to bring to the meeting. If you know now, let me know now. If not, please email me over the next day or two so I can give them enough. So, Because like, this morning I emailed Brenda and Sarah and said, hey, can you give us a debt schedule? And they worked all day and <laughs> did a lovely job in presenting it. But it would be nicer to give the people more time. But I was a little crabby, wasn't I? Yes. <laughs> do you want to know before we adjourn or do you want us to come? Yeah, if you know, I, th I think we can take like another two minutes. Okay, and... so uh, if, I, if I could, yeah. um, I would like to see backup on the, um, the hybrid police cruiser. So anything from MHQ, the written estimates from MHQ or wherever it is he... Uh, the so I so get to that, uh, Julie, are you collecting those? I'm writing down police okay. cruiser bids. Great. Written. Okay. Anything else that we're interested? I'm interested in a discussion of the overtime policy for police. Um, because we talked a lot last year about overtime for EMS, but we didn't really talk about overtime for police. So I'd just like to understand that, um, how, how it's. And Not that I have any issue with it. Just I was going to say, there's John had uh, sent out an email here this last week saying that there was going to be a lot more overtime because they've had a lot of cases that they've taken on um, okay. different for different things that they're that they're having to to um, work on. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of, I've been, I've been looking a lot at the use of free cash, as right. you know, and I know we didn't have time to talk about it tonight, but if there is any time to talk about it next week, because I'll add it to the we agenda are, for next I mean, week, we're already starting with a structural deficit and it's yep. grown exponentially over the past week. Yep. So. <laughs> okay. Anything else I should put on next week's agenda or any specific materials that we should request? I'm going to be asking the same thing next week about the following weeks, but we don't have enough time to talk about that right now. So um, with that, I wish you adjourn. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, we adjourned at 623 p.m.